A man named Frank dumped his wife Lucy for giving birth to a black baby, but just five years later, a DNA test revealed something truly horrifying. Lucy's heart raced with sheer elation and anticipation as she and her husband Frank prepared to welcome their first child into the world. Lucy and Frank had made beautiful plans for the future after they would gotten married. They had planned to have at least three beautiful kids they would love and cherish for the rest of their lives. However, it seemed like their dream was almost shattered when Lucy failed to conceive after five years into their marriage. They consulted the best fertility doctors and went for countless fertility tests. But the couple had gotten the same news, which was that nothing was medically wrong with both of them fertility-wise. Most of the doctors advised the couple to just be patient, that they would surely have a baby when the time came. But Lucy was tired of waiting. It wasn't easy for her to carry on with her daily routine without thinking about her situation. She couldn't mingle with her married friends because all they seemed to talk about was about their kids and what they'd been up to. And that wasn't all. Lucy's mother-in-law, Charlotte, wasn't taking it lightly with her either. She would always lash out at Lucy whenever she had the chance and bluntly tell her that she needed to see and play with her grandkids before her demise. Lucy understood that Frank was the only child of his mother, so she tried to excuse her mother-in-law's obnoxious behavior by telling herself it was right for Charlotte to think and act the way she did. Frank, on his part, would always tell his mom off for being too hard on Lucy, but it was increasingly becoming too obvious to Lucy that he was also starting to get really concerned about their situation. Frank had always wanted children too, and it saddened him that it was taking too long Theirs was a lovely home. Frank and Lucy really loved each other so much, but it was just obvious that their home was lacking something, and so their joy was incomplete. Fortunately, almost five years into their marriage, luck finally smiled on Lucy, and she became pregnant. Frank was ecstatic. Finally, his joy was complete. It was even more exciting when the CT scan showed that they were going to have a boy. Frank and Lucy shared a bond of hope and excitement as they eagerly awaited the arrival of their bundle of joy. In due time, Lucy's heart raced with excitement as she lay in the sterile confines of the hospital room her swollen belly a testament to the life growing inside her. Frank stood by her side, his hand clasped tightly in hers, offering words of encouragement as she braced herself for the impending labor pains. As the contractions intensified, Lucy gritted her teeth and pushed with all her might, each wave of pain bringing her closer to the moment she'd been eagerly awaiting for nine long months. And then finally, with one final, agonizing push, the room was filled with the piercing cry of a newborn baby. But instead of the jubilant cries of celebration that Lucy had expected, there was an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. Confusion etched across her face as she searched the room for answers, her heart pounding with fear. Frank's expression darkened, his features contorted into a mask of rage and disbelief as he stared down at the tiny bundle in the nurse's arms. And then, in a voice laced with venom, he uttered words that would shatter Lucy's world forever. He's black. The words hung in the air like a damning verdict, its implication sending shockwaves through the room. Lucy's mind reeled with disbelief, unable to comprehend how such a thing could be possible. She and Frank were both white, and yet here they were, faced with a reality that defied all logic and reason. As the weight of Frank's accusation settled over her like a suffocating blanket, Lucy felt the eyes of the nurses boring into her, their silent judgment palpable in the air. In a society plagued by racism and prejudice, there was only one explanation for the color of her baby's skin, and it was one that filled Lucy with a deep and abiding sense of shame. She knew everyone would assume that she had an affair with a black man, the result being a black baby. Filled with confusion and fear, Lucy bowed her head and wept. But amidst the chaos and confusion, Lucy's maternal instincts kicked into overdrive, overriding the waves of doubt and despair that threatened to consume her. With trembling hands, she reached out for her newborn son, cradling him close to her chest as tears streamed down her cheeks. For Lucy, there was no question of love or loyalty. This was her child, flesh of her flesh and blood of her blood, and she would protect him with every fiber of her being, regardless of the color of his skin or the whispers of condemnation that followed in his wake. As for Frank, a surge of anger welled up inside of him as he stared at Lucy and what was supposed to be his bundle of joy. 
Suddenly, the room became too hot for him. Frank, not trusting his ability to remain sane in that situation, stormed out of the room, never to return. Lucy bore her grief silently. She was left all alone at the hospital. Nevertheless, she drew strength from her baby boy. Right there, Lucy named him Jason. When Jason was strong enough, Lucy was finally discharged from the hospital. She got home to an empty house. In a bid to avoid her at all cost, Frank had left a few of his belongings and had lodged with a friend. The problem was, Lucy wasn't sure which one of his friends. Lucy made a frantic effort to contact all of Frank's close friends. Unfortunately, they all proved abortive. Frank's friends had somehow learned of the development and were very displeased with Lucy. None of them were willing to let her in on Frank's whereabouts. Completely dejected, Lucy gave up on trying to find Frank. She would take care of Jason herself. Though she didn't have a job, Lucy was grateful that they had enough food and cash in the house. They had also bought a ton of baby food, diapers, and other baby-related stuff in preparation of this birth of their child. They would live on that until Frank returned. Every day, Lucy prayed for his return, hoping that he would have a change of heart and they could go back to having a beautiful home. The return of Frank brought a fleeting sense of hope to Lucy's shattered world. For three long months, she had prayed for his return, clinging to the belief that love would conquer all and that the bond they shared would be enough to bridge the gaping chasm that had torn them apart. But as Frank stood before her, his eyes cold and indifferent, Lucy realized that her prayers had gone unanswered. He had returned not out of love or remorse, but out of necessity. He had overstayed his welcome at his friend's place, and it was only right to return to his own house. The tension between them crackled in the air like electricity, igniting daily arguments that turned their once loving home into a battleground. Frank's disdain for their son, Jason, was a bitter pill for Lucy to swallow. His refusal to acknowledge the child as his own, a constant source of pain and resentment. He was not involved in Jason's upbringing in any form or manner. One fateful night, it dawned on Lucy that Frank's hatred towards Jason was skin deep. It was a quiet night and everyone had retired to bed. Unfortunately, Jason had a fever and he wouldn't stop crying. His loud cries pierced the quiet night as Lucy tried all she could to pacify him. Frank rolled in his bed in irritation, cursing the very day Jason was born. He tried to shut the sounds by him trying to sleep, but Jason's screams only got louder. In a fit of anger, Frank stormed into the room and threw the baby's clothes out of the house. Like that wasn't enough, he sent them ablaze. That experience was permanently etched in Lucy's heart as she regretted ever getting married to Frank. On several occasions, Lucy had suggested they go for a DNA test to confirm Jason's paternity, but that always seemed to aggravate Frank's anger. He felt insulted that Lucy would even suggest that. We've got all the evidence we need, Frank would scream. Isn't it enough that the boy's black? How can that be my son? And so Lucy never mentioned it again. But deep down, she clung on to the hope that there would be a logical explanation for everything. As the weeks passed, Lucy watched helplessly as Frank's heart hardened. And when he returned home one fateful day with a stranger in tow, Lucy's worst fears were realized. On a cool evening, Frank came home drunk, reeking of booze, and that wasn't the only surprise. In his arms was a scantily clad brunette who looked like a sea goddess. With a callousness that cut Lucy to the core, Frank introduced the woman as his new girlfriend, announcing that she'd be moving in with them, effectively replacing Lucy as the mistress of their home. Heartbreak and humiliation washed over Lucy in a tidal wave of emotion, as Frank's words sliced through her like a knife. She felt the sting of his rejection like a physical blow, the weight of his indifference crushing her spirit beneath its merciless heel. And then, in a final devastating act of cruelty, Frank kicked Lucy out of the house, screaming that he wouldn't share his house with a cheat. With tears streaming down her cheeks, Lucy gathered her precious son in her arms, her heart heavy with grief and regret. She had nowhere to go. She had been totally dependent on Frank when they got married. He'd pushed for her not to work since he made enough money to take care of them. Lucy knew her only hope was her elder sister, Benedicta. Filled with trepidation, Lucy wondered how she would meet her sister for help. Benedicta had never been in support of Lucy's marriage to Frank. For some reason best known to her, Benedicta had never liked Frank, and she made sure she let Lucy know how she felt. But Lucy had told her off. 
She had warned Benedicta to stay off her marriage, and she was clearly jealous. Benedicta had left them and never made contact again. A wave of shame flooded Lucy's heart as she thought about how she had talked down on her only sister, but she had no other option. With a dejected demeanor, she knocked on the door of Benedicta's three-bedroom apartment. Benedicta was shocked when she saw her sister right at the door. Lucy looked forlorn with a baby in her arms. Without thinking twice, Benedicta already knew what happened. She drew Lucy into a deep hug and consoled her. All past grievances forgotten, she welcomed her into her house, where Lucy told her everything that had happened. Benedicta welcomed her to her home, letting her stay as long as she wanted. Lucy was totally grateful. She had told her sister off for butting into her marriage, but there she was, offering all support. She vowed to protect her son at all costs, to shield him from the pain and suffering that awaited them in the outside world. Although Frank had abandoned them, leaving them to fend for themselves in a world that would judge them harshly for the difference in the color of their skins, Lucy knew that they would survive. She would do everything to make that a reality. With a determined spirit, Lucy embarked on the journey of rebuilding her life from the ashes, casting aside the chains of despair that threatened to drag her down. She forged ahead, her unwavering love for her son serving as her guiding light through the darkest of times. Not wanting to burden her sister's family any longer, Lucy set out in search of a job, determined to carve out a better future for herself and Jason. And finally, after months of tireless searching, Lucy's perseverance paid off. She landed a job as a sales manager in a bustling shopping mall. It was a modest position, but for Lucy, it was all that she needed. With her newfound stability, Lucy was able to save up enough rent to rent a modest house for herself and Jason, a place they could finally call home. Before moving into their new apartment, Lucy took a moment to express her heartfelt gratitude to her sister Benedicta for opening her home to them in their time of need. Benedicta was sad that they were leaving. She had already bonded with Jason, but she was glad that Lucy was finally getting the best out of life. They said emotional goodbyes and Lucy set off to begin another phase of her life. Enrolling Jason in a daycare center, Lucy set about balancing the demands of her job with the responsibilities of single motherhood. Her days were a blur of activity as she juggled work, child care, and household chores with tireless dedication and devotion. But despite her best efforts, Lucy could not shield Jason from the cruel realities of the world outside their doorstep. The innocent boy with his bright smile and boundless curiosity became the target of ridicule and scorn. His classmates mocked him for his skin color, as they assumed that his white mother had adopted him from the slums. Unable to bear the thought of her son suffering such indignities at such a tender age, Lucy made the difficult decision to withdraw Jason from school, determined to protect him from the cruelties of the outside world. Instead, she hired private tutors to teach him right at home. Three years after Frank kicked her out, Lucy had rebuilt her life. She had found a stable job, a cozy home, and most importantly, she had Jason by her side, filling her with love and joy. One evening, as they were enjoying a peaceful moment together at home, there was a knock at the door. Lucy hesitated, wondering who could be visiting at this hour. To her shock, when she opened the door, there stood Frank, the man who had walked out on them years ago. Frank fell to his knees, begging for forgiveness. Lucy was taken aback by his sudden appearance and his unexpected apology. Confused, she listened as Frank began to explain himself. He revealed that his father was very sick and needed a kidney transplant. However, his father's blood type was rare, AB, making it difficult to find a suitable donor. Without hesitation, Frank had volunteered to donate his kidney to save his father's life. As part of the donor screening process, the doctors conducted a DNA test to ensure compatibility. To everyone's surprise, the test results revealed something shocking. Frank was not biologically related to his father. Frank had never been so shocked in his life. Unable to comprehend the revelation, Frank had confronted his mother demanding answers. After years of keeping a dark secret buried, she had finally confessed to having an affair with a black man during a difficult period in her life when she couldn't conceive. He had been her college sweetheart, but her parents had refused to accept a black suitor. She finally got married to Frank's dad, but her old flames never died. She secretly visited her lover even when she was married. Unfortunately, in one of their escapades, she had gotten pregnant. Wanting to cover her infidelity at all costs, 
Frank's mother had claimed the baby belonged to Frank's dad, who never suspected foul play. He was even overjoyed at the thought of finally having a child. Fortunately for Frank's mom, her white genes had dominated, resulting in Frank being born white. However, genetically, he still carried the black genes inherited from his biological father. This rare genetic phenomenon explained why Jason, Frank's son with Lucy, was born black. The truth hit Frank like a ton of bricks. He felt his whole life had been a lie. He also realized that his own prejudices and assumptions had led him to make a terrible mistake, abandoning his wife and son based on skin color alone. Filled with remorse and regret, Frank begged Lucy for forgiveness once again. But Lucy, though understanding, could not forget the pain and hardship they had endured because of his actions. Lucy was relieved for so many reasons. At first, she had fully been exonerated from the accusations of infidelity. And secondly, though she never loved Jason less than she should, she finally understood why his skin color was black. It was the closure she had so longed for. In the end, while Frank's revelation provided closure and clarity, it couldn't erase the past. Lucy and Jason had already moved on, building a life together filled with love and resilience, and she made sure she let Frank know about it. There was no more room in her life for him, and perhaps it was best that way. As the years passed, Lucy delved deeper into understanding the genetic phenomenon that had affected her family. She spent countless hours researching, consulting experts, and connecting with others who had experienced similar situations. Driven by her own experiences, Lucy felt compelled to become an advocate for families like hers. She made it her mission to raise awareness about the complexities of genetics and challenge societal prejudices. Through her advocacy work, Lucy aimed to promote acceptance and understanding, urging society not to judge families based on appearances or misconceptions. Her efforts didn't go unnoticed. Lucy began receiving invitations to speak at conferences, participate in panel discussions, and share her story through interviews in various media outlets. People were captivated by her resilience and determination to turn a personal hardship into an opportunity for education and advocacy. And as she continued on her journey, Lucy remained steadfast in her commitment to making the world a better place for her son and future generations. What lessons did you learn from this captivating video? Feel free to share your comments with us in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.